and welcome to the Military Honor Guard dedication. We thank you for being here on this very special occasion during Homecoming 2015. A big thank you to the full battle rattle brass quintet of the 188th Army National Guard. Let's give them a round of applause. We're very glad that you could all join us for this dedication, part of the Edson and Margaret Larson Alumni and Leadership Center dream was to have a very special place, a place of honor and dignity, commemorating those men and women from the greatest generations. Those men and women who saw the duty to the country to serve in one of the branches of the United States military. It is for them and for the memory and honor of their service that we gather to dedicate the Mayville State University Military Honor Garden. As we all gaze upon this beautiful monument to our veterans, we very much thank the Brown family for their sponsorship of the American Eagle, the center sculpture at the center of this monument. Let's give a round of applause for that wonderful, wonderful centerpiece dedication. We see the beautiful meditation benches on each end, and we thank the friends and teammates of Melvin Buzz Lurth for the bench dedicated to the memory of all veterans killed in action, prisoners of war, and those missing in action. We thank Dixie. Let's give a round of applause for the friends and teammates of Buzz Lurth. We thank Dixie and Larry McGillis and their family for the other bench that tells the special story of Dixie's dad, Edwin, one of six brothers who went off to fight in World War II and all came home safe and sound after the war to Edmore, North Dakota. Let's thank the McGillis family for helping us share just one of the many stories we thank the team that worked together to design, organize, fundraise, and oversee the construction of this beautiful site. We thank Doug Anderson for putting the idea into visual form. Thank you, Doug. We thank Dr. Martin Johnson, to my left, Roger Erickson, General Buck Bedard for organizing the effort and overseeing its completion. And we thank Dina Bergstrom and the Alumni Association and Foundation team for raising the money. Let's hear it for this team that put this together. And we thank all of you for your contributions and your support for making this possible. We thank Hatton Granite and Chatton Tad Carinta of Stampede Concrete for their professional work to make this site beautiful. And a special thank you to the Avenue of Flags, spearheaded by Harlan Johnson and Clark Solvold, and sponsored by American Legion, post number eight. Let's thank them for these beautiful <laughs> flags as our backdrop. And now we begin our dedication ceremony. We will have the presentation of colors and we are thankful to have members of the U.S. Marine Corps Recruiting Substation in Fargo and the U.S. Marine Corps Law Enforcement Detachment Company from Wapaton for the presentation of the colors. March on Colors. Please stand.
now NSU student Shalene Helmer singing the Star Spangled Banner. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, <coughs> whose star stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the And now for comments from our co-chair of the project, Dr. Martin Johnson, MSU, class of 66, and corporal in the U.S. Marine Corps. Dr. Johnson. Thank you, John. <laughs> I'd like to add my welcome to everybody that's here. It's great to see such a good turnout for this event. Uh, I had quite a list of people I was going to thank, but John did it for me. So I'll just add my thanks to everybody he mentioned. And uh, what can I do? I can't leave this quick, over, so I have to make a few additional comments. I would like to uh, mention Roger Erickson. Roger, raise your hand, please. There he is, a fellow Portland pirate. And Roger's been the sounding board that this thing came together maybe seven years ago and when uh, good old uh, <coughs> Doug came up with the original idea and put us together on the committee and said uh, we wanted to do this. And uh, you know, we got started. It, it evolved many, many times in the process until it, it's what you see today. But uh, anyhow, Doug was uh, conspicuous by his absence during most of the work, of course, but uh, that's what a good leader does. <laughs> I would especially like to thank Don Wamsted from uh, Hatton Granite. He uh, helped us immeasurably with the process of putting this uh, the whole thing together, as did uh, Chad Parenta from uh, uh, Stampede Samantha, as was mentioned. He was a uh, wonderful help throughout the whole process. I'd also like to add a special thank you to everyone that purchased the plaque. That's what made it all possible. It takes money to do these things. And uh, it, it's nice to honor someone in your family or yourself or, or whatever, and there are spots available yet, so I'd urge you to give it some serious thought. And in conclusion, I have one more thing I have to say. Uh, I have to tell you a story about 
this all comes together and you think it's uh, everybody understands exactly what you're doing. Well, there's Chad, Don, and myself. Each had an idea of how these plaques should lay. So, and, and I was sort of the, the foreman, so I sent him a memo saying, this is what I'd like you to do, so forth and so on. So about 10 days ago, we got together here to do the actual work, and we looked at it, and each of us said, ah, something's wrong here. Well, as it turned out, we all three had a different concept of how we were going to put the plaques in. So evidently, a uh, message wasn't quite clear, but it did come, came out perfect. So uh, sometimes a mistake is really a, a blessing in disguise. In, in uh, to closing, I'd like to add a special thank you to all of the veterans that are here today. And uh, what more can you say? This is what it's all about. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. And now the full battle rattle brass quintet with their medley of U.S. Armed Forces Services songs honoring all branches. Thank you to the full battle rattle brass quintet for traveling here to join us today. And now for comments, I'd like to introduce class of 65 alumni 
Emil Buckpedard, Lieutenant General, U.S. Marine Corps, retired, for a few comments. General Bedard. I've only got about an hour of speech here, so excuse me, I just gotta get my notes opened up. First of all, let me tell you how very special it is to be with you today. And uh, to all our veterans that are uh, here with us, and certainly in recognition of service to our country. And uh, I would just like to say that for me, service started here in Mayville State. And uh, service was taught to me by three horsemen. You know, the uh, Army had their four horsemen after World War II. They played in the great backfield. So we had three horsemen here in Mayville. And uh, they were uh, Al Meyer, Jerome Berg, and Harvey McClellan. One of those uh, three horsemen has just ridden off into the sunset here the last week, uh, Dr. McClellan. It was a great honor for me several years ago uh, in a large command that I had at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, commanding about 45,000 Marines, uh, to be able to have Jerome Berg attend that uh, ceremony and uh, to see me pin on the third star. <clears throat> and I was able to uh, introduce the coach uh, to uh, several thousand people. And uh, so we got done. He came up to me and said, I think I got promoted. The coach did. I said, no, it's me. And uh, we got that squirt away. <laughs> it was wonderful to have Jerome with that, with that thing. That ceremony. You know, when uh, we talk about service, one of the things I learned at this great uh, college, and one of the things we were taught, we got rid of some of the terms of uh, I and me. And it became about the team and we and uh, who we are collectively. And I think that really epitomizes the way we talk in our services. It's about the team. It's about we. It's about what we do collectively together. There are uh, several others that uh, I would certainly uh, be remiss in not recognizing. Dick Forsyth, who helped me through my minor in math. Dr. Nielsen, Dr. Lynn, who sits with us today. And all the things they taught us, not only about academics, but about life in general, about commitment. You know, I've been to 61 different countries. And uh, in each of those countries when I'm driving along, and some of them are very dangerous to drive in, I'm always reminded of my instructor, A.B. Holmes, who taught me driver's ed here. He said, uh, keep your eye on the road and look out for the other guy. And uh, he probably kept me alive. Back behind me is where West Hall used to be, where I uh, lived. And uh, I'm only reminded several times after a real <coughs> Saturday ball game of being uh, beaten up and crippled up a little bit from the game and uh, oiled up a little bit by Budweiser. And, uh, <laughs> coming into West Hall and bouncing on the ball machine and uh, Ms. Kwanbeck would come out of her little uh, apartment there and help you up to your room. <laughs> <laughs> that only happened once or twice, didn't anyway. <laughs> I'm also reminded that uh, the great teams that we had here in the early 60s, some wonderful veterans that were on that team. Some very dear friends. Ronnie Ness who stands over here. Tough linebacker, tough as they come. David Gorman, running back. A Pat was set to played with. And of course, uh, a dear friend, Marty. And the veterans brought, uh, I wouldn't call it maturity, but they brought something else uh, to our team. Uh, natural leadership that they had brought to the services. A little different look at things. And uh, dear friends to this day. And we certainly looked up to them. I think what we learned in the classroom was about 40% of our education. What we learned in the dorms and what we learned in campus and what we learned from each other, probably the other 60%. You 
No, it was wonderful. On Thursday, I got to stop in Grand Forks and visit my mother, who's 95 years old, or he was young. It was kind of a business trip because she reminded me several years ago that I was in the will, but I was in pencil. <laughs> And I was trying to sort that out a little bit with him. But uh, she also said, you're going up to Mayville, right? I said, yeah, I am. She said, uh, that's at school where they taught you a few things, right? I said, right. And she said, well, you know, I taught you a lot. And uh, I was reflecting a little bit over the past day or so about what my mother taught me. And I want to share a couple of those things with you. Excuse me for a minute, I'm going to put my glasses on here. I come from Las Vegas, they don't have a window. <laughs> okay, here we go. These are uh, things my mother taught me. My mother taught me to appreciate a job well done. She said, if you're going to kill each other, do it outside. I just finished cleaning. <laughs> My mom taught me religion. She said, you better pray that it comes out of the carpet. <laughs> she also taught me travel time. If you don't straighten up, I'm going to knock you into next week. <laughs> she uh, taught me logic. Because I said so. <laughs> she taught me more logic because I said so once. She taught me foresight. Make sure you wear clean underwear in case you're in an accident. <laughs> she taught me about the science of osmosis. Shut your mouth and eat your supper. <laughs> She uh, taught me about the circle of life. I brought you into this world and I can take you out. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll joke you aside. My parents and God bless my mom taught me respect. Taught me to care about others. And taught me above all that to understand there's a God that's bigger than all of us. You know, I want to share with you just a moment, uh, as we stand here this morning, in this beautiful sunlight, this wonderful setting, there are thousands of men and women around the world protecting us. And, uh, and protecting our freedoms. And I think we should always keep in mind that uh, they're out there the job day in and day out. I was in the Pentagon on 9-11, about 42 yards from where the bird went in. And I don't think we should ever forget that uh, 17 terrorists and four aircraft killed almost 3,000 people on our own soil. 700 more than Pearl Harbor. Some 43, uh, 4,300 people injured, 435 first responders lost their lives reacting to the towers of the Pentagon. A few weeks ago I spoke on the anniversary of 9-11, and some 14 years later we are still involved in the global war on terrorism. 7,000 veterans 7,000 of our great young Americans have lost their life in Afghanistan and Iraq. 55,000 have been wounded and maimed in that war that's gone on for 14 years. But I would remind all of us as we gather here today, this war is not over. Don't think for one minute the terrorists are going to stop. They want to destroy us. They want to destroy our way of life. They want to destroy who we are. And I would just ask you, continue to pray for our men and women in uniform that are out there fighting that war. You know, uh, 
I served almost four years in the Pentagon, and I got to tell you, it's a tough place to work. Demanding, 18-hour days, it's never done. But uh, one thing I found that, that got me through the day was prayer. I'm not an overly religious person, as Marty Johnson will tell you. <laughs> but uh, I want to share this prayer with you. Lord, I've been so good today. I haven't raised my voice to anyone. I haven't called anyone rude names. I haven't yelled and screamed, ranted or raved at anyone. I haven't even broke anything or hurt anybody. But Lord, I'm getting out of bed in five minutes. I might need your help today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as we uh, look at this wonderful monument, dedicated to service of classmates, friends, relatives, reminds us of, of service. Service to this great nation and all that it stands for. And all the freedoms that we have provided by this service. Irrespective of service, irrespective of rank, we share a common name called veteran. We proudly wear it no one can take it away from you. And a veteran is someone who has raised his hand, repeated his name, and said, I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And I do this freely, without many, any mental reservation, purpose of evasion, so help me God. And that's the oath that veterans have taken. It's the beginning of our day. I would like to share with you a uh, short poem as I conclude my remarks. It's called Voices. At setting sun, I think of them. Veterans who went off to war. When the day is done, I long again for friends who are no more. In every way I can discern the things for which they fought, and every day I try to earn the freedoms that they bought. Or there are times I wonder why the best of us must strive and leave behind poor folks like I, do we deserve our lives. But then the voices speak to me, or whence their courage came, we made our choices, we were free. Live now, everyone, and do the same. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for being here today. And I would share one last comment with you. Every service has its own service motto. Service motto of the Marine Corps, Simple for Dallas. It means always faithful. Faithful to our country, faithful to our God, faithful to our Corps, faithful to each other as Marines. And I would add to that faithful to our alma mater. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, General Bedard. And now we will begin our dedication, reading the names of our honored veterans. We thank Hatton Granite again for the great work they, they did. There was a deluge of black orders constantly coming through, and we got about 98% of them done before today. There are a, a couple that were still on their way, and they will be placed later. But we will be reading all of those who we did place at the monument and we thank Captain Granite for doing such a great job of getting those together. These veterans from all branches of the armed services are alumni, veteran family members of our alumni and staff, and those from our Mayville community. Those honored include those still living, those deceased, and those who fell in service to our country. Each name will be read and honored with a sounding bell. And I am privileged to read these names today, especially 
with my dad passing in March, his name is also placed, and I'll have the honor of reading his name. And my wife, Jan, will be sounding the chime, so we uh, will have uh, a good time being able to do that and honor those special folks. Douglas H. Anda. Alfred Anderson. Harry T. Anderson. Milton H. Anderson. Leroy F. Byer. John Wilson Baker. Stephen John Baker. Earl D. Bacham. Emil Bedard. Jerome R. Berg. Edward P. Birmingham. Kenneth Bolstead. David G. Brown. George H. Brustad. Don Cannon. Theodore L. Christensen. Robert Clay, Larry D. Dawkin, Kenneth Eastman, Michael J. Eastman, Edgar B. Ellisted, Gerald L. Engelman, Roger W. Erickson, Clark Ewan, Daniel C. Ewan, George Miles Fowler, Kenneth O. Fugelberg, Lowell B. Fugelberg, John Filling, Garth A. Garrett, Wayne M. Garrett. Raymond H. Grzeski. John R. Gutterberg. Donald H. Reggie. William H. Wynn. Cortland G. Hansen. Ethan C. Hansen, J. Henriksen, Larry L. Heskin, Clarence Hoimi, Edwin Hoimi, Elmer Hoimi, Goodwin Hoimi, Herman Hoimi, Melford Hoimi, Thomas Hoimi, Alan Holmes, H. Lee Holzinger, Harlan I. Johnson, Irving A. Johnson, Ivan J. Johnson, Martin W. Johnson, Lee Caldor, William J. Crane, descendants of Martin and Lars Carlsted, H. A. Kotzman, Leroy H. Clocky, Barry E. Coring, Reuben B. Corsmo, Benjamin Kvislin, Gary M. Larson, 
Howard John Lee. Reuben A. Lairfold. Harley Edward Ludwig. Benjamin E. Lunek. Melvin A. Lurth, Jr. Merwin J. Ling. Orlin I. Ling. Daryl McGillis. Curly McLean. Harvey McMullen. Dwayne M. Miller. Colin Oscar Moe. Herman A. Moe. T. Howard Mullen. Ralph G. Moore. Gerald G. Nankivel. Olaf Peter Nelson. Morris S. Nelson. Ron Ness. Earl Orvik. Clark E. Peterson. Robert O. Peterson. Nels Peterson. Robert D. Pittenger. Russell Radetzky. Walter A. Rindy. Gilman E. Rude. Thomas Sebi. John O. Sand. Marvin L. Chap. Joseph H. Scudgy. Willard D. Soderberg. Fred Spees. Gerald Spees. Keith Spees. Hartwig Strand. Charles Swenson. Oli Swenson. Oscar Swenson. Gerald K. Swift. Harold M. Tosted. Alvin Tollefsrud. Neil Tollefsrud. Myron Ulan. Chester A. Beseth. Daniel G. Walker. Albert O. Varnadal. Vernon Willison. Sean Paul Worley. Michael S. Warner. Robert W. Wymore. Before we close today, I want you to uh, be invited to a simple lunch prepared and served by the MSU Alumni Association Board and alumni volunteers at the Alumni Center. With the chilly weather, you're welcome to take your lunch inside the Alumni Center or the lobby of our Agassiz dorm across the street. As we meditate on these names that have been called, we ask Shalene now to favor us with her rendition of Traveling Soldier.
Thank you all again today uh, for your support, for your gifts. We uh, ask for God's blessings on all of you today. And did you notice that as we got closer to the reading the names, how the breeze and the flags began to wave? I think that's, that's pretty special. And before we do our final march on colors and our taps, which will take place during that, General Bedard had wanted me to read you the actual lyrics that go with the song Taps, and it gives us a perspective as the soldiers retire or in the evenings. These would be the words that would be in their, their minds as they heard that Taps play. And the words go, Day is done. Gone the sun. From the lakes, from the hills, from the sky. 
all is well, safely rest. God is nigh. Fading light dims the sight, and a star gems the sky gleaming bright. From afar, drawing nigh, falls the night. Thanks and praise for our days, neath the sun, neath the stars, neath the sky, as we go, this we know, God is nigh. March on Colors. Please stand. Turn colors. Thank you all. Enjoy the rest of your homecoming weekend and enjoy a little lunch with us. Thank you.